So let's talk about waves. We'll talk quantum quantum today, some waves. We'll discuss uh, atomic models. Um, it's going to be lots of fun. So waves are uh, disturbances in a field. And you can think of them uh, sort of like how uh, a field might uh, respond to you pushing on it or something disturbing it. And energy will dissipate as a response. Like, it's, like you can see here in the picture of water, when you're, when you're throwing like a rock or a pebble in the water, you're creating some sort of a disturbance and the water is going to dissipate this energy that was just thrown at it by creating this wave, this, uh, uh, these concentric circles that will dissipate the energy evenly. You can think of waves uh, in the ocean as well as, uh, uh, as sort of a disturbance due to wind or gravitational forces or things like that that would move the energy from one area to the next. You can also think of a, a wave, a standing wave would be that in a guitar. If you pluck the, uh, a guitar, you will create some sort of a wave that's staying in place. Uh, it's going to oscillate back and forth and the, the energy is dissipated as sound. Okay, so you can see in a lot of different things. Uh, it could be sound, it could be light, it could be movement. Uh, and we'll really focus here today on light. Light travels as a wave. Just like all these things that I just showed you, you could think of light as having these invisible waves that you're not going to be able to see because the waves themselves are very tiny. Okay, so light itself is an example of what we call electromagnetic radiation, EMR. Electromagnetic radiation uh, carries a whole, a whole lot of gamut of different types of radiations, and I'll show it to you in a second. And uh, as the particles will oscillate, for example, they will, they will emit this radiation. Uh, the sun emits electromagnetic radiation, and we see portions of it as light. And there's a lot of different sources of electromagnetic radiation, and we can use it for a whole bunch of different applications. What do I mean by that? Here is the electromagnetic spectrum. Note that all of this stuff is really one and the same, okay? And I'll define what a wave looks like in a second, but suffice it to say that the stuff you see that's light here, like a light bulb, if you just change a little bit of its properties, it's the same as a microwave uh, radiation or an X-ray or radio waves, okay? And uh, to, to get back to what I mean by this, let's talk about wavelength and frequency, all right? And uh, to get to the bottom of this, think of a wave here. I have a wave and think of it sort of like a, what you would see in the ocean, right? Something like this, right? I can define this thing here, the distance between these two peaks as the wavelength, okay? I can have long wavelengths or I can have very short wavelengths. These would be shorter wavelengths, okay? Also wavelength. And uh, this is defined by the Greek letter lambda, okay? Wavelength is lambda, all right? Now you could see this one other thing that, that, that I'm talking about is frequency. So if I'm standing right here, right? Uh, let's see, uh, I'll draw an eye. Bear with me, I, I'm not really good at drawing. I have an eye here looking at this peak, right? And now this thing is going to travel. Like imagine like a sort of like a water wave, uh, you know, in the ocean. I'm going to count how often I'm seeing a peak, okay? So uh, if, I'm, if I'm looking at this wave here, the peak is going to come much later than this wave, okay? So a wave that has a, uh, a large value for the wavelength, meaning the distance between the peaks is large, it's going to have a lower frequency, okay? So they're inversely related. Uh, something that has very short, small wavelengths is going to have very high frequency. I'm going to be counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's one, two, three, four. So the frequency here is much, much higher, uh, much, much higher here. Frequency is lower here. Uh, and the wavelength is opposite of that, all right? So... Let's look at that again. Wavelength is the distance between two peaks. Frequency is how often the peaks arrive at this certain location where I chose this eye, where I drew the eye, right? And uh, we are going to define that as, well, how many waves per second, okay? So uh, 
I would count, I would sit there and be like, oh, one wave, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then how many would be, would be within one second? Okay, so I would count the number of peaks I would see in one second. That is defined as a hertz, H-Z, hertz. Hertz is just one of a second. Instead of writing one of a second, you can write hertz. So if I wrote 10 hertz, it would mean 10 per second. So this, this wave has a frequency of 10 hertz, meaning that I'm seeing peaks, 10 peaks per second. That's, that's all that means. You can use it for anything that happens, not just waves in general. Like if you're seeing, uh, you're seeing cars driving down a road, right? And you're just standing in place. How many cars am I seeing per second? You can write that as hertz as well. Okay, it's the same thing. The speed of the wave. Now notice, this is a distance. So imagine this being meters or something. This is per second. So if I multiply wavelength and frequency, I'm going to get meters per second, which is speed. So the speed of any wave is me multiplying its wavelength and its frequency. The wavelength is lambda. Frequency is the Greek letter nu. This is not a V. It's a nu. It's a, like the Greek N, nu. Okay. Uh, and like I just mentioned, the wavelength and the frequency have an inverse relation. For light, the speed for light waves is a constant. And it is 3 times 10 to the 10, 10 to the eighth meters per second. It's a it's a constant of nature that we're going to. Uh, you can commit this to memory. Uh, this is not going to change. This is the highest speed anything can travel. It's the speed of light, and uh, the, when we're dealing with light stuff, this speed doesn't change. Other things, obviously, speeds change. So if you're not dealing with light, if you're dealing with other types of waves, you can change the speed. In this class, we won't deal with changing the speed. We're only dealing with light. But when you go into physics. You're going to be playing with all three variables. Here, we're going to fix the speed as C. C for light is equal to lambda of light times nu of light. All right? And let's go back to that. Um, uh, here, again, I'm showing you low frequency, medium frequency, high frequency. And this is, again, the wavelength. Uh, I'm not going to use this in this class, but this is the amplitude. The larger the amplitude, the more energy this wave has in general. But this is the physics realm. We're not going to deal with it in chemistry. All right. Let's go back to this picture here that we had here. I'm just going to uh, make it smaller. All right. So uh, high frequency means it's high energy. Uh, wavelength and frequency are inversely related. And I'm, I just showed it to you. Light, all of light is the same stuff. Okay. So when the sun is shining, it's going to emit stuff, light that we're going to see, what we call visible light. It's going to emit infrared light, microwaves, radio waves ultraviolet way, uh, x-rays and gamma rays and all this kind of stuff, right? This is all the same. The only difference here is how, how far this peak is from this peak. But it's all the same junk. It's just how frequently these peaks show up, okay? We have just been accustomed to absorb this area of the spectrum with our eyes. Some species, uh, most notably bees, can go more to the ultraviolet light. Some bugs can go, just can see in this area. Some bug, some other uh, critters might see stuff in the infrared. I'm, I'm not a biologist, but I know that there is a wider range uh, in, in different organisms. So it's just, it's an interesting type thing. We just, we as humans have been accustomed to the visible light. Some genetic variations can arise where a person can actually see UV light. Uh, I'm, I don't know what that looks like. So that would be extra colors that I, you and I don't know what they are. But uh, basically, it's a very narrow part of the, uh, of, of the electromagnetic spectrum that we can actually see. But that doesn't mean that uh, if we can't see it, it's not there. It's still there, and we can do stuff with it. So uh, we can listen to uh, light. We can see light. Or we can use light to do other things like uh, radar, which is basically uh, another uh, receptive type of a tool. I can see something in the distance using that, right? Uh, microwave uh, is the same thing. The microwave oven uh, itself emits microwave waves, which are uh, light, also light, they're all electromagnetic radiation, uh, and it just has a different wavelength. You will notice that the higher the frequency here, the more energetic this stuff is. Okay, so AM radio, very super low energy. Uh, Gamma rays and, and X-rays, very high energy, okay? Uh, and so um, uh, this dictates the energy, uh, and we're going to discuss the energy in a second. But you can see the wavelength, as you can see, as I increase the frequency, I 
decrease the wavelength as we mentioned. Okay, so that would mean that the wavelength for uh, for X-rays uh, is tiny because the frequency is so high, and the wavelength for uh, AM radio, right, is the size of, uh, larger than a soccer field. Okay, so every the, every the peak would come two peaks that if you was to stand there and count peaks. Uh, you would not see a second peak until uh, a, a second, uh, basically the entire length of a soccer field. Here, you, you, if you're counting peaks, they would come every water molecule. And, and we're talking here x-rays and gamma rays and things like that. So here, it's tiny. Uh, so that's, that's the difference here between them. It's basically how, space, how far space they are. Uh, and you can see that the, the spectrum is quite huge. Uh, even though it's the same stuff, uh, it does lots of vastly different things. All right. So let's look at examples of what I can actually do with this. Uh, and uh, let's, let's go here. Uh, so I can calculate frequencies and wavelengths. And I'll do that now. So here, what's the frequency of violet light? That's, that's a question I might ask. Uh, so I'll tell you that the wavelength of violet light is 408 nanometers. And I want to know what the frequency for this is, OK? What's going to govern this again, as we mentioned, is speed, which is light, speed of light, which is C is going to be equal to the wavelength times the frequency, okay? That, okay. So that, that's, that's my governing equation that I'm going to use. And I am looking for the frequency, uh, and I'm given the wavelength. So I have this. I have this, too, because that's a given. That's, that's a constant. I don't have this. That's what I'm looking for. So I can rearrange this thing, and it would be uh, this. Okay, so that's that's what I'm going to use. This is going to be my equation that I'm going to use. It's pretty simple. C is given already. Okay, C as I mentioned is uh, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Okay, so for me to get this frequency, which is going to be in hertz frequency, I want this in hertz, which is one over second. That means that I want this guy in meters, so I can cancel out the meters and get one of a second, okay? So need this in meters, okay? So I'm given that in nanometers, so I'll just convert this to meters. So, uh, so 408 uh, nanometers, that's what I'm given as the wavelength. I'm going to convert this to meters, right? So nanometers is going to be at the bottom. And I know that one nanometer is 10 to the minus 9 meter. So now my nanometers would go away. And I'm given, I, I can calculate this easily that this, uh, uh, I can get this now in uh, meters. And this will be 4.08 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. OK, now I'm just going to put that in there. Lastly is going to be, this is going to be 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And I'll divide this by the, the what I just calculated in meters to be meters, uh, 4.08 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. The meters would cancel, and I'm left with just 1 over second. Uh, and so this is going to be 7.35 times 10 to the 14th. 1 over second, which is hertz. It's the same thing as hertz. I can write either 1 over second or hertz. So that means that my peaks come, uh, well, I will have 7 times 10 to the 14th uh, wave peaks coming every second. That's, that's blue light that you're seeing. Okay? It comes pretty frequently. It's, it's quite, quite intense. Okay? So that's, uh, that's one example. Let's do another one uh, a little quicker. Here. Uh, here, calculate the wavelength of yellow light now. And I'm giving you the frequency here. Oh, that's got to raise a little. The frequency. I want the frequency. I want. I got the frequency. I want the wavelength. Again, C is going to be wavelength times frequency, like that. Um, I know that C is 3 times 10 to the minus uh, 8 meters per second. This is already more of a second. I can, I can uh, get my wavelength. By the way, let's do, let's do the wavelength in nanometers. Okay, so I want wavelength in nanometers. Okay, so this will be, I'm, again, I'm going to skip, I'm going to skip the explanation because we just did an example. This is going to be 3.08 times 10 to the minus, to the, 
times 10 to the positive 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Uh, I don't have the wavelength. I'm going to look for that. And this is going to be 5.09 times 10 to the 14th, one of a second. Okay? So one of a second, one of a second cancel. I'm going to get meters. I do this. Uh, and when I do this, I get the wavelength is 5.89 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. And I'm going to convert this to nanometers. Meters. Uh, and I'm going to convert this to nanometers. 10 to the minus 9th meters is 1 nanometer. Meters cancel. I'm left with nanometer, which is 589 nanometers. This is the wavelength of uh, blue light, of yellow light, I'm sorry, of, of yellow light. Uh, so that means that the length between two peaks is this tiny little number, 589 nanometers, all right? All right, great. So let's talk about what Einstein got his Nobel Prize for, which it was not for relativity, but actually for the photoelectric effect, okay? And uh, I want you to think of a film, all right? So. When I see, when you and I see light, right, we see it as a continuous thing. And what I mean by that is, let's let's go here to uh, to this pic, to this video here that I got from YouTube. All right. So this video, uh, I'm muting it, but basically, where is that car? One second, I'll start this in the beginning. I have a car here, and you can see this this car coming down. Uh, you can see the bottom right pic in the bottom right video. It's very grainy. I see it every. The frames are pretty choppy, right? It's one frame per second. The the bottom left, it's a little bit better, but I, I still see the choppiness. And it gets much smoother the more frames per second that I have. All right. And uh, what that means then, the scientists noted, uh, is that. Uh, Light acts that way as well, which is funny to think about. 